So in this video, what we're going to be doing is going over some of the latest news and details around Fallout 76. Right now actually marks a very interesting time in this game. We're in the transition period in between the first DLC ending and the next one beginning, which I think is just a couple of weeks away. We have explicit confirmation we should be hearing more at E3, which is one week from this Sunday. But otherwise, in this video, what we're going to be looking at is some new news from Bethesda, an actual response from them over the first DLC and some of the perceptions that they did see of it, as well as some details around what we can expect from future DLC that might get you kind of excited, but as well as several other things, such as several exploits, as well as other lingering issues. If you guys enjoy the content, you can leave a like or subscribe, even though this next week might be kind of slow for Fallout 76. Literally eight days from now, I should have some pretty massive stuff coming that you're not going to want to miss. So one of the first things worth mentioning is actually the recent maintenance to Fallout 76. Yesterday we did hear and actually see that they were taking the servers down in order to actually fix an exploit, and that's the only real official confirmation we did get. In reality, it seems like what this was patching was a dupe exploit that was present in game. Apparently this exploit was getting pretty popular right before everything was taken down and it was fixed. And on one hand, this is pretty awesome. Bethesda is taking a proactive approach at actually removing these exploits pretty soon after they originally find out about them. But on the flip side, this isn't necessarily the best case scenario as one, they're not always as proactive. There were a couple of dupe exploits that were around for a week plus that I knew about, a lot of people in the community knew about, and they weren't patched out super quickly. And even further, it's my understanding that there are still dupe exploits out there, some of them being more coveted as to not become widely known and patched. And the reason I bring this up also is this isn't a solution in the sense that even if a dupe exploit is out for just 24 hours, that still gives a lot of users a lot of time to dupe a lot of rare items. And as of late, we're still not seeing bans. We're still not seeing any item deletions. So although it's definitely less of a problem, if it's only out for 24 hours, it still is a fairly big one because that gives users a lot of time to actually abuse it. In the future, I would really like to see Bethesda actually handing out bans, deleting some of these items or deleting a lot of these items. Even outside of that, Bethesda still definitely does have an issue with not resolving some of these bugs or glitches fast enough. Not too long ago, I actually made a video about how a new Fallout 76 bug was giving minor spoilers to people who were playing the game under the Italian, French, and German languages, and I actually think some others are in that also. It seems like this was some kind of translation database error, but in essence, while playing the game like this, things were just named wrong, whether it be challenges, enemy names, or even quest objectives. This has been a problem in the game for two full weeks, and although it is kind of funny or comical at first, it also does inhibit gameplay. If you're trying to complete a challenge, you just won't know what you have to do, as it'll say something totally different now. It is fairly game-breaking in many aspects if you actually play on some of those languages. This is one of those things I've commented on in the past. I think the rate by which bugs are patched just has to go up with this game, because two weeks for something like this seems pretty unacceptable. I do definitely feel for Bethesda here. It is leading up to E3, which is a well-known crunch time internally in game development, but it's also not like this is a totally unique or one-off occurrence. We've been having consistent issues like this, where a bug pops up and takes several weeks to get patched for a long time now, and hopefully following E3 and as we actually get into the next DLC, wave, this is one of those problems they do address. Although outside of that, and definitely some more positive news, we do hear from Bethesda developers as far as their response goes around Wild Appalachia. Typically every Thursday, we would get an Inside the Vault article that detailed future DLC releases, but naturally now, since we're not getting any new news until E3, they actually took a different approach and did a Q&A with their developers. This is definitely worth a read and actually gives an interesting insight that we typically don't get. In this, we hear from the design director as well as the lead question designer, and one of the interesting questions that they did respond to was just, in their opinion, what went well with Wild Appalachia, which also should hint at what kind of content we'll see at the future. Big credit to them, they both mention how there's a lot of success, but there also were several hiccups along the way. They mention how seasonal events and community-focused features, such as player vending and the purveyor, were really well received, and it's something they are almost certainly going to look into expanding in the future, but also that they've made a good dent in bug fixing, although there is still room for improvement. And even further, something I know a lot of people will like is actual difficult events, things that are a true challenge in the game, even for late game players. And later, one of the developers actually describes how the community response to Fosnot and just seeing how people reacted to Fosnot 
was a game changer for them internally. And further, that they actually have planned a lot of cool changes and additions for the coming months as a result of what we saw and learned from Fosna, which I personally think is really cool. It was a really unique experience in game, and I'm excited to see what they add in the future. You have to imagine, even not too far from now, we see some limited time event for the 4th of July. This presidential race image has been data mined for a little while now, as well as there is that fairly exclusive room in the White Springs bunker that we still don't have access to. Fallout in general has a lot of America undertones, and you have to imagine they'll take advantage of that, especially during the 4th of July. And actually, explicitly on the question of if the Fosnot Parade is coming back, they do respond that apparently there's a holotape in Helvetia, that since now the robots are in charge, they can ignore the calendar and hold the festival whenever they please, and they expand on this just by saying the odds are good. So I would say almost certainly, and that makes it definitely sound like we're not going to have to wait a full year to see Foss not return, which is pretty cool. As to the question of what kind of future content we can expect in this game, they do mention new events, and specifically holiday themed events, and it's doubtful we've celebrated this holiday in this manner before. But even further, they discuss how they actually plan on expanding on some of the existing in-game features, adding more to some of the stuff already introduced. There have been rumblings about the Squirrel Scouts in-game. Right now with the Ever Upwards questline, you can start out as a Tadpole Scout and eventually rank up to a Possum Scout, but I think it'd be cool if they actually went back to that with future DLC and added a third and even higher rank of a Squirrel Scout. And overall, I did leave out some of the other more minor things, just kind of warm regards for the community that they did mention in this article, but I think this is really cool. I think hearing from some of the developers and people designing certain aspects of the game directly is a welcome addition to these inside the vault articles. Now I'd especially like to hear more of this, in particular maybe around certain controversial changes as they pop up. And one final thing pretty interesting about this article, right at the end of it they basically say, hey, we're going to be at E3, that's where you'll learn more about Fault 76, but specifically they actually say where we're going to announce more details about what we have in store for Fallout 76 throughout the rest of 2019. So at first glance that might not seem new and noteworthy. In the past they've confirmed they're going to be at E3, it seems pretty likely they're going to talk about nuclear winter as that's the next big DLC wave. But if this wasn't a typo and they actually mean the rest of 2019, that also seems to include Wastelanders. The third Fallout 76 DLC wave that's supposed to be massive, game-changing, and coming this fall, aka fall of 2019. So I personally suspected that we will see Wastelanders at E3, it's Bethesda's biggest stage of the year, and it's when you'd want to advertise your massive DLC overhaul to the millions of people that likely watch it. But again, assuming this isn't a typo and you actually read it in the literal sense, it does seem to confirm we will hear something about that there. Although one other thing that is worth mentioning that I have seen several of you guys message me about recently are further clues and notes around Vault 51 and the mystery that has been rising around that. If you're not familiar, I have made a full video on what's going on in Vault 51. I encourage you to watch that if you're uninformed, although it does contain increasing level of spoilers, although I do warn you. But either way, in-game you found these two mysterious chests and then the Overseer's body that had a checklist on it. To me, it really seemed like this was Bethesda doing a tease leading up to their E3 conference. I imagine we'll hear a lot more during E3. And although nothing new was added, some people have actually gone back to find older clues one of which is around Vault 51 and somebody actually getting invited, specifically a member of the Welch family. So first, you could actually find a note that invites Ida Welch into Vault 51. This seems to be from Vault Tech directly, and interesting enough, it actually mentions how they want a response no later than October 1st, 2077. That seems interesting in the sense that the bombs did drop on October 23rd. Did Vault Tech know ahead of time that the bombs were coming? Although at a separate location, you could find other interesting parts around this. It seems like Ida Welch did discuss this with her daughters, one of which seems to actually be at school at Vault Tech University, which if you're not familiar, that's where they train overseers. So Ida Welch's daughter, Stevie, actually reaches out to Mills, who's at school there, saying how mom was picked for Vault 51, and she wants to see if Mills can uncover anything about it at Vault Tech University. Mills gets back to her with a fairly distressing letter, saying how after looking into the vault registry, it does not look like a good vault to go to, and that their mom should not go there. So again, even though people are just uncovering this now, and it's getting more attention due to some of the other mystery we have seen in-game, these are fairly old. It seems like they've actually been in-game since the release 
piece of Wild Appalachia quite a while ago, but tying it together with the rest of the story, it does look like this does mean Vault 51 does have some pretty sketchy stuff going on on the inside. Again, if you guys do want to know more, I encourage you to watch my full video where I pretty conclusively, I think, uncover what the experiment is in Vault 51. Although through data mining, it doesn't actually seem like Ida Welch actually ever makes it to Vault 51. In the voice files, we do have the names of several of the vault inhabitants, and her name isn't there. Although again, that's just data mining that could change in the future. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video though. One thing I will just mention, there are some new skins and decently cool things in the Atomic Shop. These are in limited time, so if you don't get them now, you'll literally never be able to get them. But either way, as always again, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.